Joining us now is Ojo, a whistle trending around the world. Hello, Genex. Good morning, Dr. Abatin. Good morning, Tundra Biola. Good morning, Good morning, Rafai. Good morning, RG. Well, all right. Good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In Ukraine, a Russian airstrike devastated a maternity hospital on Wednesday in the besieged port city of Mariupol. The attack, which was described by President Vladimir Zelensky, as an atrocity came despite Russia agreeing to a 12-hour pause in hostilities to allow refugees to evacuate a number of towns and cities. Ukrainian officials say at least 17 people were wounded, while others, including children, remain buried underneath the wreckage. In the United States, Sir David Bennett, the first person to have his failing heart replaced with that of a genetically altered pig in a groundbreaking operation has died just two months after his transplant surgery. David had agreed to receive the experimental pig's heart after he was rejected from several waiting lists to receive a human heart. He was 57 years old. Under sports, world's greatest golfer, Tiger Woods, took his place amongst the best of all time on Wednesday night. When he was inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame, Woods, who was introduced to the stage by his 14-year-old daughter, Sam, got emotional as he shared a life story of passion to play and a work ethic that made him feel like he earned it. So without the sacrifices of mom, <laughs> to me all of the teacher golf tournaments, dad who's not here but who is still in me this work ethic to fight for what i believe in chase after my dreams nothing's ever going to be given to you everything's going to be earned under entertainment ryan kubler the director of hit superhero film black panther has spoken out after he was mistaken for a bank robber as he tried to take money out of his own bank account. Kugla was briefly arrested for withdrawing the sum of $12,000 that Ella had reportedly told her boss she suspected an attempted robbery after misinterpreting the situation. Finally, the world's largest online retailer, Amazon, is set to win an unconditional EU approval to acquire U.S. movie studio Metro Goldwyn Mayer for $8.5 billion, giving it the right to major blockbusters, including James Bond, one of the most lucrative franchises in film history that's earned nearly $7 billion at box office globally. Well, let's begin what's trending, taking a look at reactions trailing comments made by the governor of Ebony State, Dave Umahi, who on Wednesday accused lawyers of the People's Democratic Party of misleading Justice Iyang Eko, the judge who issued the court ruling ordering his removal as governor. Umahi made the statement while addressing a crowd of supporters and also denied ever criticizing the judge. However, on Tuesday, after the judge had ordered his removal and that of his deputy and 16 members of the state's assembly, Umahi had said that the judge did a hatchet job and described the ruling as jungle justice. Well, let's take a reaction from senior advocate who wrote, Dave Umahi lied. The video clip is in the public domain. He should be arrested for defamation of Justice Equo's character and malicious statements against the judiciary. For a governor to accuse a judge of conspiracy is a weighty allegation and should be investigated. Well, we have that video. Let's uh, pull that video up and take a look at it before we take more reactions. There's no constitutional provision for any hatchet man to remove a governor. There are three ways whereby a governor can vacate his seat. He said that by that resignation or impeachment by the House of Assembly. There is no any other constitutional provision that empowers a hatchet man to turn the constitution and the law upside down. 
have listened to the judgment of uh, Eko, and it's very obvious that he was on a mission. I feel so sorry for the judiciary. The executives may have problems, the uh, legislature may have problems, but the moment uh, you know, justice could be purchased, then we are in trouble in this country. This is not a pre-election matter, this is not a tribunal matter. And so he has murdered justice in this country, and he will be remembered and his generation for this uh, 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 jungle justice, which has nothing, no leg to stand. I'm still the governor of Ebony State, and he has no powers to remove me. All right, let's take a tweet from Emmanuel who wrote, Sir, your utterances are absurd. If the judgment was in your favor, you would have congratulated the judge and court proceedings. I beg you, tender an unreserved apology to Justice Iyang Eko for the foul language, hatchet job. This is an insult and impunity, uh, sir. Rufai, your comment. See, if, if somebody can lie and in 24 hours claims he didn't lie, the lie again. Basically, within 24 then, hours. Then what is the hope for the country when the political class, and it's not just anybody, a leader, you know, when we're growing up, basic values, don't lie. All liars shall go to their fire. That's what it taught us growing up. But you're seeing leaders that are supposed to lead the way lie on TV. He went further in that video to say that he's not sure that other cases about a boy state presented before that same judge was going to hold. In fact, he went ahead to say he was going to report the judge, the judicial council, if possible, they could take, if possible, they could take those cases off the judge. He said all of that. We saw it. So just come out and own up to it and apologize rather than coming out to lie. And you see, if we want to truly build a country that works for all, we can't have governors or leaders that come on TV to lie. Just say, oh, I said some things that were wrong about the judge. I couldn't control myself. I totally apologize for all of that. Not coming out to lie. This is a lie. Yeah. I, I mean, a lot of people are saying he should apologize to Njobiola. I mean, this is... The... I have no idea why everybody's talking about hatchet job and jungle justice. For me, the issue is when you start to talk about a person's generation. Mm. For what now, ah. really? That, for me, was beyond the pale. But in with regards to the fact that he's trying to now walk it back and say he was referring to PDP's lawyers, he was clearly referring to an individual. That much is clear. And I just think that it would have, would have been fine if he was upset about the judgment not going in his way, if it would have been fine if he was trying to calm or continue to inspire his supporters. But talking about an individual and their generations, no, that's not fine at all. And I just recall the other story that's been the big news this morning with the Senate, you know, being accused of finally, well, being accused of betraying the president on one hand and from other people standing up for themselves and being the mouse that roared, finally. Senator Adamo Alero, when he was citing Order 52, trying to have that um, second reading of the Election Amendment Act, Stood down, he was saying that the matter is sub judice. So whether or not you like a court ruling, you must respect it. And I think that little note should be sent to Governor Omahi. <laughs> Dr. Abbott. Okay, one. <clears throat> the first point, obviously, what you have helped to establish, yes. because we discussed this uh, mm -hmm. uh, particular matter this morning. We also had the former Commissioner for Information, former uh, Deputy National President of the Nigerian Union of Journalists. If uh, Abia Onyike on this program. And he had very negative words, very strong words uh, for the uh, Ebony State uh, Governor. And in fact, we had to end the program by putting a disclaimer that those words yeah, do not represent yeah. the views of Arise TV. Yeah. However, you just provided concrete evidence <laughs> in law. Evidence is 99% uh, of it. That indeed, the Governor lied. Okay? Because, uh, you know, in the uh, uh, other statement that he made, he said, oh, he was not talking about the judge. But he just provided the evidence. And I think that that in itself is very embarrassing. Uh, it's a great indictment of the uh, 
governor himself in terms of his personality and his uh, you know, uh, credibility. The other part of it is blaming PDP lawyers. He says, oh, it's PDP lawyers that caused the problem. Uh, he's going to report them to the MBA. Okay, don't lawyers enjoy certain privileges when they are representing a client? <clears throat> There's no such thing as uh, PDP lawyers or APC lawyers. Every lawyer is an officer in the temple of justice, okay, to do justice to what the client wants, to, to represent the client. And there's something called attorney client uh, privilege. And then, of course, he's, the governor of Ebony uh, State has allowed himself to make the mistake of uh, sitting in judgment over a court of law. I think that's presumptuous. Okay? So somebody may well ask and say, who does he think he is? Is he above the rule of law? Is he above the courts of the land? I think it's just to say, in young court, that can help us resolve the matter. Uh, under the laws, Section 308, does it grant uh, governors immunity from being charged for contempt? I doubt if, <laughs> well, it, goes, if, if it goes that, that, that far, you know. So I don't know whether, you know, the, this is covered. Because, but the point has to be made, put on record uh, by the court that, look, uh, governors cannot just sit down and... Uh, speak as if they are above uh, uh, the judiciary, which was the same point, similarly, that was made by the uh, Senate when the senior president was saying a court of law, uh, incidentally the same judge involved, cannot define the uh, limits of the scope of the, of the legislature, exercising its functions under section uh, uh, four of the uh, Constitution. In the same manner, a governor whose powers are derived invariably from under the executive sections of the uh, law, cannot come and be berating, uh, you know, uh, a judge uh, in public. So right. it's not about apology. I think that the governor should be called to order. Yeah, is that possible? Could he be arrested too? I no, mean, not, not arrested. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> from civil, yeah. yes, the from civil and criminal yeah. proceedings. Yeah. yeah. So this section 308, you see why some people are saying, take another look mm. at uh, section 308. Yeah, absolutely. I wish we had more time. We had other stories, but we'll just take our final story here. A video of uh, an alleged traffic offender assaulting a traffic officer while demanding for his keys that were seized by the officer has gone viral. The alleged offender rough handled the officer who ended up in tears. Let's take a look. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. I mean, it's 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 a very funny video, but I mean, how how can this happen to drop your laugh? Poor guy. I mean, you were asking why did he take his keys, but that's what happens. If you are a traffic offender, you're not allowed to move. You're supposed to wait, and probably they issue you a ticket. But it appeared that he probably wanted to vanish or run away. Well, I bet they do. He doesn't even have a ticket to issue because they don't yeah. issue tickets. So what they do is they become very malicious. They take your key. They force you to pay them a bribe. The money doesn't in the end go to the government. That's what they do. Mm. So he's paying for all of his sins now. <laughs> in a sane society, why don't we have people that can just take evidence, take the, the guy's uh, uh, plate number picture, and write a letter to him afterwards? But we do, the question is, do we even have a proper data bank of plate numbers all over the country? Mm -hmm. So it's just a microcosm of how terrible society has become. Mm -hmm. Why must you take the keys? Some even jump in your car. Yeah. I've seen last month officials in Lagos that they jump in your car, and people drive them all the way to Badagri. That's unfair. Yeah. Yes. Sindhu looks in shocked. Lagos. VIOs have become very notorious. You recall a recent case where the judge, you know, uh, ruled that VIOs, you know, should understand their limits. Their job is not to go onto the road to harass people or to ask for roadworthiness certificates uh, from owners of private vehicles. This is uh, a commercial vehicle, but I don't think that their powers include, 
you know, seizing people's keys. Yes. Okay, and the man, you know, such a coward. He, he, oh, it's God. a man like him that is uh, harassing him. He's saying, help me, help me, help me. <laughs> no, but... He, <laughs> he, he, no, he, he, he can't he, even defend himself he, he, as an officer of the state. He has no facility to call for backup. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> Really not fair. Well, thank you guys. <laughs> That's all I have for you uh, on what's trending today. I'll see you tomorrow.